I see a real design in a diverse native grassland. And one of those things that makes me think that, makes me see that, is this switchgrass. So I'm in a switchgrass field here, and switchgrass has the ability to take nitrogen out of the air and make it available to the plant. Now that's with a microbe in the middle of that. So the way this happens, before I got into the diversity and how it impacts diversity, you got to understand how this happens with the switchgrass plant. So the air is 80 some percent nitrogen. The plants can't use it. It's why people put on nitrogen fertilizer. This nitrogen, in short, goes from the air to the microbe. The microbe receives food from the switchgrass plant, and then the microbe or the switchgrass plant receives that nitrogen from the microbe. So it's this symbiotic relationship. And if you want to learn more about that, we actually have a different video where I go more into detail. I ran across a research paper the other day, and I was just really, I found it really fascinating. And I suppose uh, understanding just a little bit of my history would help you to understand why I understand a research paper to be fascinating. But there was a time in my life when I spent a couple years in the plant physiology lab of Dr. Dale Blevins. And this lab, I learned to think about plants. I learned to appreciate how plants work inside. And I learned to be able to read the very boring, uh, very highly technical wording on these research papers. Um, if you want something to put you to sleep at night, pick one of these up because it, they're not real thrillers. They're not written in a way to really, you know, engage you. But nonetheless, I find it interesting. And I found this one, and it was called the Associative Nitrogen Fixation in Switchgrass, Panicum Brigatum, of course we have to get the Latin name in there, across a nitrogen gradient. When I was reading this paper, I came across this graph and I really found it fascinating. So across the bottom axis, or the x-axis down here, we have different seasons of the plant's life. And this was actually a study they had done about fertilization. So we have pre-fertilization time frame, the post-fertilization, so right after the fertilization, uh, peak biomass, so when it's making the most growth, and then senescence. So as far as fertilization, you know, this or just a little earlier would be a good time to fertilize the switchgrass field if you were going to do that. And so, and senescence, of course, is after the plant is dead and brown for the winter. So we've got these different phases in the life cycle of the plant. And we're actually not gonna look at the fertilization trials because they did show that with fertilizer, you get less nitrogen fixation um, in the plants, but that's not what we're after today. We're gonna look at the control where they did no nitrogen fertilizer. And we're gonna look at on the Y axis or the up and down axis over here is nitrogen fixation in the root. Well, and I should point out, there's two different locations that this was done. The triangles were in Michigan and the circles were in Wisconsin. So we find that there in the early growth of the year, we had some amount of fixation, kind of depended on where you were at, but you know, it was on either side of one unit of nitrogen fixation. Then it got a little lower. Then it increased back, you know, basically through that whole season, of pre-fertilization time frame to peak biomass, we're running basically around one uh, unit of nitrogen fixation in that route. But then we get to post senescence and it jumps up, depending on which site you were at, to potentially over seven and a half. And even in the, the Michigan site where it was lower, we were you know right there at five. So we have over double the amount of nitrogen fixation happening after the plant has gone dormant. So why is it happening that this, this plant is, doing, is giving so much carbon to these microbes after it goes dormant? It can't even use it. And as I look at that, I, I don't know why the plant's doing that. I don't know if it's just got so many root reserves it's pumping down into the soil that there's excess and it leaks out. I don't know if there's a different design. But what makes me think about it is that the diversity of plants, if you have a diversity of plants, there's this beauty in this design because there's this free nitrogen fertilizer, a big amount of it, just sitting there waiting to be used. So if you have a native cool season grass or a native forb or legume that's green during that fall time frame when the switchgrass is going dormant, well, there's all of a sudden this flush of nitrogen. 
life is good. Life is looking up. And so it's like, it's this free fertilizer to this other plant. And so when I look at these native grasslands, I am constantly amazed when I learn these little details. I'm just constantly amazed by the beauty of the design in these grasslands and how they function. It's a really big fascination to me. And when I discovered this paper, I was like, hey, this is one of those neat little things about how diversity of plants is actually better than just one plant by itself. I'm Elizabeth at Hamilton Native Outpost where we love switchgrass. But what we love even more than switchgrass is a diversity of native plants recreating the grasslands like the bison would have seen. If you have an interest in learning more about native plants or switchgrass, check out our other videos or check out our website.